Hi, my name is Sharon Apia, and I'm Orchard Director for the Philadelphia Orchard Project. Once you've taken the first steps to establish your orchard, it's time to prepare to tackle the potential diseases that could interrupt your harvest. Let's dive into common diseases and how to manage them. In this video, we'll cover three of the most common disease challenges we encounter, brown rot, fire blight, and black knot. Brown rot is a fungal disease that commonly affects stone fruits such as peaches, cherries, plums, and apricots. The disease overwinters on infected fruit in the tree, called fruit mummies, on infected twigs, and on the orchard floor. Infection begins during the bloom period through airborne spores and continues to spread throughout fruit development with the help of insects, weather, and fruit-to-fruit -fruit contact. Unmanaged, it can cause the fruit to rot and the twigs to become cankered. In a bad year, this disease can damage the majority of fruit on a tree, and in many years, brown rot is the number one cause of crop loss in pop orchards. When spotting brown rot, be on the lookout for wilted, browning flowers, and brown spots on your fruitlets and near flowers. Later in the season, look out for fuzzy brown or gray shriveled fruits and cankers on the stems and limbs of the tree. You can minimize the spread of brown rot by pruning out twigs showing canker and removing any affected fruits that are still on the tree or that have fallen to the ground. Preventative measures include winter pruning to open up the tree to sunlight and airflow and the application of holistic sprays. For trees experiencing severe crop losses, consider applying copper or sulfur fungicide before or after blossoming in spring as a stronger measure to prevent brown rot. Keep in mind, when using sprays, it's important to read the labels on any products you use very carefully to ensure proper application. Fire blight can be downright devastating for an orchard because of how highly infectious it is. This bacterial disease primarily affects pome fruits such as apples, pears, Asian pears, and June berries, and if left untreated, can kill a whole tree over the course of a year. Fire blight is contracted primarily through the spring blossoms of fruit trees. The bacteria overwinters at the base of spurs and in infected shoots. It can spread a short distance by wind and rain from nearby infected material. Long distance infection can also occur through unsanitized pruning and insects carrying the disease from one blossom to another. Fire blight rapidly spreads when daily average temperatures are above 60 degrees Fahrenheit, especially during the blooming season when there is an increased humidity and rain. One of the clearest indications of fire blight are stems that look charred as if they've been scorched by fire. Dead leaves will remain on the tree and shoot tips will curl downward. This is known as shepherd's crook. Any infected flowers will wilt and brown. You can limit fire blight by selecting fire blight resistant cultivars. Preventative measures include winter pruning and the application of holistic sprays or a copper sulfate spray in early spring. One of the best ways to avoid fire blight is to properly sanitize your tools between each pruning cut to prevent the spread of infection. Once you spot the early signs of fire blight, it's important to prune it out as soon as possible. In dry weather, prune out wood 8 to 12 inches below the site of infection. Once removed, check the stem at the cuts. If discolored, cut even lower. Once all the infected material is removed, burn it, throw it away, or bury it deep at least 100 feet away from the orchard. In the spring, cherry and plum trees infected with black knot may develop subtle, velvety, olive green swellings on their branches or twigs. If left unattended, these swellings turn into large, brittle, unsightly black galls that can kill the whole limb or even stunt the growth of the entire tree. These galls are caused by the fungus Dibotrion morbosum. Black knot typically occurs in damp spring weather since spores are spread by rain and wind to new growth. Discharge and infection are greatest during this period when temperatures range from 55 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The fungus overwinters in the swelling and may take a few seasons to display visible symptoms. To identify early signs of black knot, be on the lookout for young knots that are soft, velvety, and olive green. Over time, they'll become hard, brittle, rough, and black by autumn, and then easily seen in winter and the following spring. Knots create spores in the second season, 
If left untreated, they can kill limbs and the whole tree. Oftentimes, infection rates may depend on the specific variety of fruit tree. If you're interested in growing cherries or plums, avoid highly susceptible varieties such as Shropshire and Stanley. When managing existing black knot, it's extremely important to identify and remove any knots in the orchard to keep the disease from infecting other trees. Winter is often the easiest time to inspect trees for infection since there are no leaves to hide any potential knots. When getting rid of knots, prune off infected limbs 6 to 12 inches below the knot. Disinfect pruners between cuts and remember to burn, deeply bury, or remove the prunings from the site. As a preventative measure, Serenade is a biofungicide that can be used to attack fungal pathogens and prevent spore germination. Spraying should take place during the early spring as the flowers open through petal drop, repeating at seven day intervals. For persistent infections, apply two sprays of lime sulfur seven days apart before the buds begin to grow in spring. Many of our favorite common fruit trees are susceptible to diseases. However, they can be managed with early detection and action. Some measures that can mitigate disease damage include proper pruning and preventative holistic sprays in the early spring that boost the tree's immune response. Ultimately, tackling potential fruit tree diseases starts before planting by selecting disease-resistant varieties.